happy to have a glass. It is said, a pessimist sees the glass half empty, while an optimist sees the glass half full. Me? I'm just happy to have a glass. The optimist, the pessimist. It's all a matter of perspective. So life is. Endless experiences viewed through an endless number of perspectives. We only know the world through our perspectives, and perspective can be tricky. I struggle with perspective sometimes, both maintaining my own and understanding others. I think most of us do, at least from time to time. We lose sight of what's important, we get distracted, we focus on the negative. We fail to see others' points of view. That's the trouble. We can't really view the world through anyone else's eyes, and sometimes we struggle to see it through our own. The best any of us can do is try, give our best effort to understand ourselves, recognize our circumstances, and empathize with others. I don't claim to know anyone else's pain or plight, and I have no right to proffer advice to anybody. I do a bad enough job managing my own perceptions. But if we share our thoughts in a positive way, if we open our hearts and minds, we at least provide the opportunity for others to connect. I can't speak to anyone else's perspective. I can only share how I see things and what I try to do to manage my own view of the world. It's easy to focus on the negative, to see the glass is half empty. I'm guilty of it. A lot of us are. There's just something so glaring about that empty space. It doesn't take much effort to see the challenges in our lives, to focus on the negative aspects of our situations, to dwell on our own shortcomings. Again, I don't pretend to understand anyone else's troubles. There are tragic, horrific, unconscionable things in this world, about many of which I have no first-hand knowledge. I don't want to make light of any struggles. But I am certain that dwelling on them without action will not fix them. That's why I don't believe in complaining. For some people, vocalizing challenges may be a step in their action process and I'm all for honest identification of a problem. But often, it seems like complaining is done for the sake of complaining. I think it's a way for some people to connect with others and gain a sense of significance. It just doesn't make much sense to me, and I sometimes struggle to relate to others' complaints. I'm sure I haven't always been a great friend to those airing their grievances, But it's not that I don't care. In fact, I generally do care, and I try to empathize. I even want to help. But that can be a problem, too. I tend to be all in on action, try to spitball possible solutions and go to work. That can be a bit overbearing, and some people just want to vent. I'm working on being a more supportive ear, But I've also learned some people don't actually want their problems solved. If their problems go away, they won't have anything to complain about. Others just don't want advice. Most, though, I think are simply too afraid to take action. Fear keeps us from acting. It's safer to wallow in our current troubles than risk changing them. That's when we fall into the habit of seeing the glass half empty. I do it too. I fall into the trap of aimless negativity. I complain and sit idly in my troubles. That's the hypocrisy of perspective. It's often easier to see the destructive behaviors of others than it is to look in the mirror. That's the danger, though. If we get stuck in a negative perspective, if we consistently see the glass as half empty, We become sad, angry, bitter, depressed. We damage ourselves. It's certainly better to be an optimist, then, to look at our glasses and see them as half full. 
That's the moral of the half-full, half-empty analogy, after all. But I'm not sure I'm sold on always viewing the glass as half-full, either. It is important to be grateful for what we have. Gratitude is critical to a happy and fulfilling life, and there is a host of research to support this notion. I try to actively practice gratitude every morning and every night, and I ask my own children to tell me something for which they are thankful when I tuck them into bed. Gratitude is essential, but being blindly optimistic can have its shortcomings too. If we become satisfied with our glass being half full, if we become complacent, we won't make the jump necessary to fill our glasses to the brim. I want to be happy, but not satisfied. There are people in this world, though I fear they're growing fewer and farther between each year, who are satisfied with their lot in life, who desire nothing more, and that is commendable. I just know I have to keep moving. I have to keep growing, not to acquire more, but to do more, to be more. That's why I'm not entirely sold on always viewing the glass as half full. Half full and half empty are just different labels attached to the same situation. The label has nothing to do with our ability to change the situation. That's why I just try to see the glass. If I focus on the glass, I can fill it. I want to be optimistic and happy for whatever I currently have, but I also want to stay focused on the potential, all the promise and opportunity that comes with simply having a glass. That's what I mean when I say, I'm just happy to have a glass. That's what I want for my children and my students. I want them to be optimistic, but I don't want them to be complacent. I want them to be grateful for the glass. If their glass is half full, I want them to be grateful for that. But I also want them to understand it's okay to want to fill the rest of the glass. That empty space need not be seen pessimistically, for in that space lies opportunity. We can go to work and fill the glass. Maybe that's my real problem with the whole glass analogy. It sort of suggests we should just smile at the liquid in the glass while ignoring the empty space. We know that's dangerous. We know bad things happen when we ignore the negative aspects of our lives. We know troubles arise when we brush things under the rug. We can be totally happy with certain aspects of our lives and haunted by others. In that case, the water that fills half our glass is nothing more than a distraction from the empty space. It becomes an excuse, an excuse to ignore our physical health, our mental health, the well-being of those around us, an excuse to ignore the challenges in our own lives and the tragedies of the world. I don't want that either. I don't want to be blind to my own shortcomings, and I don't want to look away from my challenges. I want to stare my demons in the eyes and feel their cold breath upon my neck. I can't fight them if I can't see them. I don't want to ignore the challenges in my life. I want to own them. That's why I try to see the glass. I try to strip things down to their simplest and truest form. I try to look past even the level of water in the glass to see the glass itself. The glass is truth. Thoreau said, rather than love, than money, than fame, give me truth. That is what I seek. It's hard to know the truth, especially in today's society, but we can find truth in ourselves if we're willing to really look. If we look at the glass, we can see both the positive and the negative. We can be happy for the things we have, and we can be clear about the things we don't. We can be proud of our accomplishments and honest about our shortcomings, and that's a crucial point. When we see the glass, we are made aware of a harsh but vital truth. We are largely responsible for filling our own glass. 
There is certainly good fortune and bad. The good helps fill our glass and the bad empties it. I was born to good parents in a country with freedoms and opportunities. I received a good education. I've been surrounded by supportive people my entire life. Those things all fill my glass. And I didn't do one thing to earn any of them. I've also had to fight back against unforeseen challenges. I've faced health problems and emotional obstacles, and those things have been empty space to fill. I've made good choices that have filled my glass, and I've made bad choices that have poured some out. We all start with our baselines, and they aren't all the same. I was dealt a good hand growing up, and some aren't. We don't all start with the same amount of water in our glasses. Some have the deck stacked against them from the jump, but that doesn't change the fact they still have a glass. For me, the glass is myself and the moment. That's the foundation. That's truth. We all have different circumstances, opportunities, and obstacles that continually fill or empty our glasses, but the water in the glass is just the situation. We are the glass, and we have only this very moment. We cannot change our past, and our futures are not guaranteed. Our glasses aren't all the same either. We all have different innate abilities and interests. We all have our own shortcomings and imperfections, but we can all fill our glasses. We might have to learn and adapt and grow to fill ourselves and our lives with the beauty and hope and truth we desire, but it can be done. We have to take action. But we already are the glass, and a glass can be filled. We have the power to fill our own glasses. We have the power to do more and be more. We have the power to help others fill their glasses too. That power can be hard to see when we focus on what fills our glasses or how much empty space we still have. But if we look past the level of water in the glass, we can see the truth. We can see the larger picture. We can see ourselves in the moment and we can get to work. That's real perspective. I am incredibly grateful for the things that already fill my glass. But I'm also grateful for the empty spaces. That empty space is just room to grow. Half full, half empty, I'm just happy to have a glass. Thank you.